life couldn't be better. I got a call today. I have an interview for a game design firm. You could be looking at the new vice president of Lone Hill Press. Once I get my license tomorrow, I kind of have everything I've ever wanted. I'm hashtag blessed, you know? But one day can change everything. Shouldn't you guys be up? Does anyone know where the diapers are? Coming in for a razor, honey. Oh, 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 sorry! Hey, man, guys are ready for you. Here you go. First, we thought it was a little weird that you even applied for this job, because we're pretty young, and you're older. <laughs> His face is all green. <laughs> it's not poisonous. I don't think it's poisonous. I'll be your driving examiner. It's my girlfriend probably wants to start prom. We never answer the phone when I'm driving. Proms don't happen every day. Hey, Celia. Put the phone down. <laughs> you tricked me. Get out. I don't think he passed. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Mike Mahan. I'm a professor at Regent. I had the pleasure of speaking to you today about when things go wrong, possibly. Um, growing up, I remember there's a thing they called Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law said that when something can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. And this, this movie, based on a children's book, Alexander and the Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, is based on that idea. What if, in a day, everything that could go wrong did just everything? Uh, unfortunately, the, that trailer doesn't show all the really bad stuff, like uh, when you get fired from your job, all the other things that can happen. Uh, unfortunately, in the last probably, well, 20, 30 years, I can think of a lot of days that seems like the worst day that we could ever imagine happened. It started when I was in uh, middle school, I guess. Some of y'all probably remember. Um, you're watching TV, the space shuttle's taken off, and the thing explodes right in front of you. Uh, that's, that's the first bad day I can remember on a national level. Uh, you jump forward uh, about 20, 20 years to 911 and just the Twin, the twin Towers when, it, when they're destroyed. And there, there's been some bad days we see. That day in particular changed the landscape maybe of the world. Uh, how you travel, how nations look at each other, how we look at religious diversity, the people that look different than us. A lot of things happen in that one day. Um, there's a lot of other stuff too. I was in Dallas a few weeks ago. Trying to, I wanted to watch Jimmy Fallon. So I turn on the news. That's what I have to go through to watch Jimmy Fallon at night. And, and it looks like they're playing Lethal Weapon on TV. It's not good. Now, all the stuff that happened in downtown Dallas. And we couldn't believe it. Uh, I'm, I actually was really proud of Dallas, how they reacted to, to all the situation. Just so many people were different, embracing each other. But it, it changes the city. You say, now we're amongst the list of cities where these bad things have happened. Protests and wars, there's all kinds of things that have just had really bad negative effects on national level. Not to talk about even personally. Personally, what are the things that have touched us that uh, just seem like in one day it changed our whole lives? I've got, a, uh, I've got a friend I served on the mission field for about 20 years and a friend I, I served with. Um, she, moved, she moved down to Austin, Texas a few years ago. Has some great kids. Uh, her firstborn is an amazing pianist. It just plays crazy things on the piano, everything classical you can imagine. Second, second son is the, one of the most likable people in the world. He's just amazing. Everyone loves the guy, just really lovable, great musician, all these other things. And you just see this guy's going to do great things. Uh, one of his last years, I guess his senior year in college, he does what kids do, messing around, uh, takes some kind of drug, wakes up the next day, and he's bipolar. And one day changes his life like that. Because now they're worried, is he ever going to be able to even take care of himself? And he's one of those kind of guys that probably is not, he's going to go off his meds sometime and have, have issues. Just change his life radically in one day. There's plenty of others like that too. Uh, we have a lot of military here. You, you ladies, what kind of day is it when a couple of soldiers walks up to your door while your husband's on deployment? I'll change your life. Um, it's easy to imagine these uh, Days, just one day, all the bad things that can happen. And we have this, uh, we tend to believe in this negative possibility of a day. And just the question is, so what can happen in a single day? We can imagine the bad, but what else could happen in a single day? Um, these are just terrible, no good, bad days. Terrible, no good, bad days. Um, Shakespeare said a few years ago, Woe, destruction, ruin, and decay. The worst is death, and death will have its day. Just saying, that bad things are going to happen. They're always going to happen. And for many of us, it seems like the, the power of a day is something negative. The power of a day is something that can destroy, it can change bad. The question I'd like to pose to all of us today instead is, can a day have positive effects instead? Could a day have a positive effect? 
in history, there have been phenomenal good days. There have been some days that have changed the world in, in other ways. Um, there's, a, there's a quote from, from a movie. I relate to the world through movies and through Bible stories. That's the way I grew up. I don't know why, but these are the things I love. Movies and Bible stories. A movie called Rat Race a few years back. A bunch of people running around trying to win some mo- get some money for free. And one of the guys says in there, My grandfather used to say that things take, good things take time, but great things happen all at once. Um, the guy's crazy. He's trying to convince someone to go on a race across the world and risk their life to win a few million dollars while putting everyone in the world in danger, basically. Uh, but it's an interesting concept. Great things happen all at once. As we read the scripture, there's plenty of stories where we see the world has changed greatly all at once. One that comes to mind to me is in Joshua 10. Um, Joshua is the successor to Moses. So he's taking over the land of Canaan. It's a promised land that God has promised to his people. Now, Taking over the land, getting the promised land, is not something that happens in a day. It takes years and years. But in this particular day, there's a battle. And they're battling the enemy, and they're actually routing them. So they're winning the battle. But one thing Joshua does, he prays to God that that the day will be longer. Has anyone ever wanted a longer day? A few, mostly. Anybody ever want a shorter day? (laughs) Especially today, 106 heat index. Yeah, it'd be better to just have tomorrow start. Um, Joshua wanted a longer day, so he prays to God. And the scripture says in Joshua 10, 14, there's never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. And that day the, the, the sun stood still which we interpret as the earth not rotating, um, but stand still so that they can, they can uh, fight against their enemies and, and win this battle. There are other stories. I'd like to share some other stories uh, with us today, too. Uh, working at Regent, I have the opportunity to, uh, to do some research. And everyone that applies at Regent University has to answer a question. What is something that God has shown you in the last year of your life? And the best stories usually aren't the ones from the last year. Uh, it, it, the best stories just bring up these great things God has done. I would like to read a couple of those today. Um, <clears throat> they just highlight the amazing things God's done. This one does, these two stories do talk about the last year, but they highlight the great stories I get to read. And one says this, Over the last year, I've experienced God in a way I've only dreamed of. When I was a freshman in high school, I was diagnosed with uh, spondylolisthesis, a spinal deformity. I was born with, but I never knew I had. In January of last year, I found God, sitting in my bathtub with a bottle of pills in my hand, ready to take my own life. But something stopped me. I knew I had to shake the devil, and I did, and I won. God reassured me and reminded me I was sent here for a purpose. I got on my knees and gave my life over to the Lord right there in a bathtub. Ever since I welcomed God back into my life, I have not felt any pain regarding my spine in over a year. I went back to the doctor, and when they compared my twisted spine to my new and improved one, they couldn't seem to explain it, but I could. God sent me the miracle I was waiting on. Change the life in one day in a bathtub. Another great story. This one's a little longer. The devil tried to destroy me this past year. He tried to take me down and make me submit to his power. I was in school. And so many faces ran up to me and asked me questions like, Is it true? Did you really do that? I didn't know what they were talking about at all until someone bluntly said to me, They said, The football team created a rumor about you. They said you had sex with nearly the entire team. My heart dropped and my eyes began to water. Why was all I could think. I went home, laid down, grabbed a bottle of whatever pills I saw first and put them in my mouth. And as I laid there, I thought simply, It's over. Minutes went by, and my stomach had tied itself into a knot, and I was really tired. As I leaned over the side of my bed, the pills came up and out. The next day, I had to go to school and face my fears. I had already been called a whore by my mother. My cheerleading squad hated me, and all my friends turned their back on me. The day went by, and I came home to my smiling eight-year-old cousin. She looked at me and looked back, and then the question that started to change my life. She looked at me, and out of her mouth came... The, question, uh, the words, I love you a lot. Will you please go to church with me tonight? At that moment, I was faced with what I believed to be a life or death question. No one knew what I felt in my heart or what I was going through, but a little girl, so innocent and sweet, changed everything. And in her eyes, I could tell she saw the burden on my shoulders. 
When I went to church that night, I sat in the back. As I sat there and became overwhelmed by the intensity in the room, I began to cry and asked the God that I did not know why this happened to me. Moments went by, and then Jesus came to me so clearly and said, They judged me, and they ridiculed me. They will do the same to my sons and daughters, but you must stand strong. That day I gave my life to Christ, and that one night he showed me how even the strongest people can be humbled. Power of a great day in the face of a lot of bad things. Uh, I love these stories. I love looking at how God has changed things radically and just, just, just a snap. When God heals people, when God changes things. Of course, we know in the Bible there's a lot of phenomenal good days. The question is, what can God do in a day? Well, God can do anything in a day. Uh, and that's the way the Bible starts off. Genesis 1, what can God do in a day? Well, in day 1, He can create the universe. In day 6, He can create mankind. God can create the world in a day. Day 7, He can rest. Even God gets to rest. Um, Acts 9 is another story I, uh, I love that talks about what God can do in a, in a day. Acts 9 presents, it's, a, it's after the church is starting to expand. So the church is growing, going out into the world. Uh, there's a guy named Saul, and Saul, he, he ain't a friend of Jesus. He really hates Jesus. He's mad. So he wants to get everyone that's in church and throw them in jail. But not just here. He kind of does what he can in his city. He says, well, I think I heard of a church over there. So he's going to go to Norfolk. He's going to go to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York. He's going to go everywhere he can to get people. He goes to a town called Damascus. I don't think we have one of those here. But it's like going to, not going to D.C. He goes to Damascus to put people in jail to get the Christians and put them in jail. Because he hates the church that much. He wants to, to put it all out of its misery. And on the road, as he... Uh, Near Damascus, he sees Jesus. I'm going to read uh, from Scripture a little bit, um, Acts 9.3. As he nears Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And Jesus says, I'm Jesus who you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The end of that story is verses 20, 21 through 22. Th this guy who hated Hated Jesus. Three days later, after he's been healed, is in the synagogues. He's, he's refuting his old friends. They were friends three days ago. And Saul becomes probably the, the prototype Christian, the guy that writes most of the New Testament. Most of what we know about Christianity is thanks to this guy. The church spreads throughout the world thanks to Paul and his missionary journeys. And one day, Jesus changes this guy from his worst enemy to his best friend. So, and one day God can convert his worst enemy to Jesus. God could do anything. John chapter 5 is another story I love. I love the gospel of John. Um, John chapter 5, there's a man who, he's, he can't walk. He's having some issues. It says he can't walk. He's been lame for 38 years. Well, that's a long time. Longer than I've been alive. Um, just ha have any issues. He goes to a pool, and there's a pool where the the rumor says that if you go to this pool and the waters move, if you jump in, you will be healed. Well, there's probably a lot of theology in that, and we don't want to uh, dive into all of that. But Jesus happens by this pool, and there's a lot, lots of people who, who aren't doing too well. They want to be healed. And this guy who's disabled, uh, verse 6 of John 5, says, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asks him, Do you want to get well? We're going to come back to that. Do you want to get well? So the man says, I have no one to help me get in the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And once he was cured, he picked up his, his mat and walked away. It's a great story. I, I love stories like this. It's a guy that doesn't have a name, so in some ways we can, we can relate. That could be a guy named Mike, and he's Jesus to help him. Uh, but he asked him the question. Do you want to get well? Now, why would you ask a guy that question? Do you want to get well? Anyone ever been sick? Do you want to get well? All the high schoolers would not raise their hands because, you know, they love just not doing homework, all that. But the rest of us, when we're sick, we usually want to get well. So why does Jesus even ask this question? Isn't it assumed that you want to get well when you're sick? It usually would be, but what if you've been sick for 38 years? What if you haven't been able to walk for 38 years? What if you haven't been able to work for 38 years? What does it mean to be healed? Now, in Jesus' time, they don't have computers. And they can't work from home when they're sick. 
agrarian culture. They, 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 they farm a lot. They, they raise uh, sheep. They raise cattle. They do other things. They build things. If you're lame, you don't really get the opportunity to work. So what does being healed mean? It means your life is going to have a radical change in one day. You can take up your mat and walk. You can jump into the water. You can do anything. What's it going to mean? For some people, it's going to mean you can't sit around begging anymore because you have no reason to beg. So asking a question to a guy like that is asking a, a lot. Do you want your life to be radically changed in a day? And the beauty of this is that Jesus can restore a life in just one moment, in one instant, in one day. He can restore that life. There's another story in, uh, in Mark, uh, Mark chapter 1. There's a, a leper that Jesus heals. And it's the same kind of story. Uh, a man that's on the outskirts of town because lepers, they can't be uh, in contact with other people. People can't touch them. So when Jesus heals this man, he, gives him his whole, he can give him his family back. He can give him back anything he had before. Jesus can restore a life in a day. And the point of all this is that God can change things all at once. In one second, God can change anything. He can make the world. He can change a life like this. He can make his enemy into the greatest proponent of Christianity. He can change things all at once. Of course, there's a caveat for this and maybe why he asks the, 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 this lame man in John 5 the question. It's preparation may be needed. It may take some preparation on our part to even be ready for that change, for what's going to happen. Uh, Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. Yes, I know that quote because of a movie. Because um, in some movies, someone quoted it, and we keep quoting it. Chance favors the prepared mind. Uh, Pasteur was talking about the power of observation, but we use it to say, be ready. Be ready for whatever may come your way, because if your mind's ready, things may, may work out better. A Ephesians chapter 4 talks about us as the church being ready. It says, it was he, talking about Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. There's an idea of preparation. Preparation may be needed so that we can do anything we're supposed to do. Now, a change may happen in one day, but we do need to be ready for that change. What's it going to mean? Because there's some changes that are going to have profound effects on us. This all brings us to the question, what kind of massive life changes could we imagine? What can you imagine that would change your life in just an instant or in one day? If you had one amazing day, what would it look like to change your life for the rest of your life? What would happen in that day? I think your life, your job would change maybe. Would you change jobs? Anybody want to change jobs? <laughs> I've wanted that for a while. Um, Anybody want to change jobs? Yeah, lots, lots of us might want to change jobs. What about having difficulties in your marriage? Anybody would like to have your, your marriage go a little bit better? Well, that's a, that's a trick question. because That one always means you have to do something. Because when those changes with relationships happen, it starts with you, not with someone else. Uh, even though you can want those changes. What about healing? Because we want healing to happen. In the last week, uh, or about, a, about a week ago, we had the regional conference here. And there's lots of prayer going on. They always call people, ask people if they want to be healed. And I, almost always they mention people with knee problems for some reason. I've got a little thing in my knee where when I run far enough or I bike far enough, then after that it's hard, hard for me to do stairs. I've had that for, since doing some stuff on skis that people aren't supposed to do. <laughs> but every time they ask for someone with knee problems going to get prayer, I'm like, eh, I can still walk, it's okay. Because I think maybe God doesn't really care about something that small. Maybe those people are talking exactly to me. I don't know. If they say my name, I'm definitely going to go. But if they just say with knee problems, I'm probably, <laughs> probably not going to walk up for prayer. But God can heal even small things. And that's why I love that story of the, 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 late, the, the girl whose, whose spine was, was healed in just one day. God can heal things, small things, big things in just one day. What about your car? Anybody have a broken down car? <laughs> Our van, a couple of days ago, started making a noise, a really bad noise with the 
air conditioner. So I, I get to a store, and there's a little kid. He has to be like four years old out front. He's like, hey, mister, your car's making some really bad noise. And he's holding his ears. <laughs> I think <laughs> you probably need to fix that, man. Uh, okay, thank you. I, I'm probably going to do that. Um, when I lived in Italy, we had a car. It was a brand new car. I love this car. And uh, some, someone left the lights on in that car. And I have a bad history with leaving lights on, with, uh, with jumping cars off. I used to do that for people. I had my jumper cables in the back, and I would go help people. I had this old station wagon, and uh, I jumped four people off. Every time I jumped people off, they were so thankful. They got to uh, drive away, didn't have troubles. And the next day, I got to go buy a new alternator for my car. And it cost me $200 every time I jumped someone off. So it happens once, you think, ah, it's a coincidence. Twice, four times, like, I'm stupid. <laughs> I need to stop this. So uh, I have this new car, and my someone leaves the lights on, and it goes dead. I go out and turn the key, and nothing happens at all. It doesn't do the click. It doesn't do anything. So first thought is, okay, who do I want to donate $200? <laughs> because if they jump me off, they're probably going to have to buy a new part for their car. Well, the second thought was, at that point, I was thinking, hey, well, sometimes God does stuff. Why don't I pray for my car? And who knows what will happen? So I go downstairs, I turn the key, nothing's happening, so I start praying, God, you're a great God, I know I don't deserve this, because, yeah, um, you're great, I'm not, uh, I pray, and the car starts up immediately, no clicks or nothing, just boom, it starts. Man, God, <laughs> God does great things, even with bust up cars, um, it's a brand new car. A few years later, um, we're going skiing, and the, the snow is about a foot, two foot deep in the parking garage, and the car's been making some weird noises, not supposed to make, but nothing, it's, it's new, it's only about two years old, can't have any problems. Well, uh, one time it didn't start, so the next time I go downstairs, and I'm about to take it out of the parking garage, and think, well, I better pray over this car again. God did it before, <laughs> he'll probably do it again. Pray over the car, God, just uh, please, whatever's going on, just you look after this, you know better than me, I'm not a mechanic anymore, um, but you can do everything. So I pray to God, I, I turn the key and all I hear is zzzz, and the, the motor is totally busted on the inside, bro broke everything, $3,000 worth of damage. But you know what's good about that story? God was still looking after us, because that car broke in a parking garage, not in the middle of the snow, out in the middle of nowhere. And that was good. It was under warranty. Nothing bad happened. But God was looking after us there. And I've heard story after story about missionaries and things like this with, with cars, with refrigerators. Uh, one, one missionary in Italy, they had a refrigerator that broke. So they went and prayed over it. And it lasted 10 more years until they had to give it away. It wouldn't do anything. Um, story after story where God can fix cars, anything, if we ask him to do those things. What else could God do in your amazing day? In one amazing day. Could he get you out of things that you're stuck in? Anybody ever get stuck in stuff you don't like? I've been stuck in stuff I don't like. Then you buy those books, right? All those self-help books. I hate those books. <laughs> I memorized and learned theories out of those books. And, and we write studies based on that stuff. But, but how often do they really help us? It's good. You may try it for a week. It's like all the diet books. You've got like 500 diet books at home and you do them for a week. It's good. After a month, you forget where the book is. Um, Self-help things, uh, a lot of times we, we're, we're still stuck. It's really hard to get ourselves out of things. And I had that problem personally, stuck in stuff for 20 years and you read everything, do every technique you can. And nothing happens. And for me, God in one day, boom, unstuck me. Why do we think a day can only be negative? What positive thing could God do for you in a day that would change your life completely from healing, from unsticking you? And the thing is, what God wants to do for us isn't to, to make us rich. That'd be nice, right? But that's not his purpose. God's all about restoration and making us whole. And I love something, I don't know who it was, someone said in the, the regional conference, Basically, what God wants is for us to be what Jesus would be if he looked like us. That's the idea of restoration. Not you to look like Jesus, but if Jesus was you, what would you look like? How would you be? This is what God wants for us. So we can be the most useful to him. So the best things about us can come out. So we can be the best us we can be. 
What kind of positive things could we pray for? Could we ask God to do in just one day? What could you ask God? If God can do anything, and God has healed all these people, done so many things, what could you ask God to do in a day? There's a passage in James, chapter 5, and it talks about asking God. Yeah, there's a, another blank on your pages. It says, ask God to change things. You're going to write radically there, radically. What can we ask God to change radically? This passage in James, chapter 5, says, The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. It's about the power of prayer, but it's also about a guy who looks like us. Some of us who've read the Bible and New Testament a little bit, we know some stories of Elijah. He was some kind of great prophet. What we, what we haven't read is like sometimes he, he wasn't doing too well. He's a guy that got depressed. And he went and sat under a tree and sulked because there was no one around. He couldn't find anyone else who loved, Jesus, who loved God anymore. After some great triumphs in this man's life, a man that's full of the Holy Spirit, he, he's having hard times. He's a man like us. We have good days, we have bad days. But on one of these days, this guy prayed that it wouldn't rain. That's a long time for it not to rain. Please don't pray that it doesn't rain. The rain is good for us. It had to do with national politics, with the bad king, with people that are prospering at the hands of the poor. And he prays things against these people. And God listens to his prayer. And the point is that God listens to prayer. Now, when I grew up, there was uh, a lot of things we talked about, uh, uh, belief and, and prayer. You've got to believe. And sometimes you had to, to believe that God works in certain ways. Otherwise, God wasn't going to listen to you. This verse doesn't say anything like that. It's something simple. Just that you pray fervently. You ask God. As we have in mind some things that are just, just radical changes, I think that's got what God wants for us. What kind of things we, could we pray that he changes radically? Just, just in one second, in one day. Because if we can imagine that, God, God can do that. If we can imagine those changes, God can make those changes for us. The power of a day doesn't have to be something negative. With God behind it, power of a day can be something that heals, that restores, that creates a new life in us. What would happen in your best day, in your radical change day? I'd like for us to pray for, pray for that and just ask God to do that and ask the prayer team to come forward as we pray. And I'm, I'm going to close us in prayer. Just praying about this. What, what kind of amazing, crazy things could God do for us and change our lives in one day? And if uh, you feel need to, to, to keep getting prayer, I just ask you to come, come forward as after I close, and, and we'll leave it that way. Let's pray. God, you're a great God. We thank you that uh, throughout history you've shown that you're a God that heals, you're a God that restores, you're a God that changes things. You're a God that can change everything in, in just one day. We thank you that you've... Uh, prolonged the day in the life of Joshua. I thank you that you've healed people of uh, spinal problems and you've uh, restored the lame and given the life back to those without life. God, I ask you for, for just all of us here, the people, those of us are around us who are thinking of things we can be stuck in, God. We ask you to, to work in our minds, work in our hearts and our souls. To take away those things that are that are plaguing us, that are, that are persecuting us. To take us out of ruts, which maybe we've created for ourselves, maybe we've been thrown into. God, we ask you to heal and to restore. I ask you for physical healing for, for so many of us with little problems like knees or, or feet, but also great things like cancer, leukemia. People that have uh, just all kinds of eels, seizures and other things, God. We know if uh, someone can become bipolar in a day, that you can heal anything in a day, God. 
And we ask you to triumph over evil and just show that in our lives. We want to see something and say, God did this. It wasn't a self-help book. It wasn't a doctor, but it was our God so that you can have the glory in these things, God. We ask you to look over our lives, look over everyone here, look into our hearts and, and see the things that we can, can imagine changing so that we can serve you better. God, we ask you to show us the, the positive power of the day and for you, for you to, to just change us so that we can be restored and we can be useful to you. Pray for all of us and we just thank you for Jesus who gave his life to restore and to heal and to take away our infirmities. We thank you for him. We pray in his name. Amen. Have a good week.